It is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. I had a bad cough, and I have some prescription for some of the meds that it says one of the side effects is a dry mouth. <laughs> Try preaching a sermon with a mouthful of cotton. <laughs> Bear with me. Walking down the street, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, causing him to be born blind? Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There is no such cause and effect here. Look instead for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here, working while the sun shines. When the night falls, the work day is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light. I am the world's light. He said this, and then he spit in the dust, and he made a clay paste with his saliva. And he rubbed the paste on the blind man's eyes, and he said, go wash at the pool of Siloam. Siloam means scent. The man went and washed, and so on. Soon the town was buzzing. His relatives and those who year after year had seen him as a blind man begging were saying, oh, isn't this the man we knew who sat here and begged? Others said, it's him all right. But others objected. It's not the same man at all. It just looks like him. He said, it's me. I'm the very one. They said, well, how did your eyes get open? man named Jesus made a paste and rubbed it on my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash, and I did what he said, and when I washed, I saw. So where is he? I own the boat. They marched the man to the Pharisees. This day when Jesus made the paste and healed the blindness was the Sabbath. The Pharisees grilled him again on how he had come to see he said, he put clay paste in my eyes, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, obviously this man can't be from God. He doesn't keep the Sabbath. Others countered, how can a bad man do such miraculous, god revealing things like this? There was a split in their ranks. They came back to the blind man. You're the expert. He opened your eyes. What do you say about it? He said, he's a prophet. <coughs> the Jews didn't believe it. They didn't believe the man was blind to begin with. So they called the parents of the man, now the bright-eyed with sight, and they asked him, is this your son, the one you say was born blind? So how is it that he now sees? His parents said, we know he's our son. We know he was born blind. But we don't know how he came to see him. We haven't a clue about who opened his eyes. Why don't you ask him? He's a grown man. He can speak for himself. Now, his parents were talking like this because they were intimidated by the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who took a stand that this was the Messiah would be kicked out of the meeting place. That's why his parents said, ask him. He's a grown man. They called the man back a second time, the man who had been blind, and told him, give credit to God. We know this man is an imposter. He replied, I know nothing about that one way or the other, but I know one thing for sure. I was blind, and now I see. They said, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? I told you over and over, and you haven't listened. Why do you want to hear it again? Are you so eager to become his disciples? And with that, they jumped all over him. You might be a disciple of that man, but we're disciples of Moses. We know for sure that God spoke to Moses, but we have no idea where this man even comes from. The man replied, this is amazing. You claim to know nothing about him, but the fact is he opened my eyes. It's well known that God isn't at the beck and call of sinners but listens carefully to anyone who lives in reverence and does his will. 
that someone opened the eyes of a man born blind has never been heard of, ever. If this man didn't come from God, he wouldn't be able to do anything. They said, you're nothing but dirt. How dare you take that tone with us? And they threw him out the street. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And he went and found him. And he asked him, do you believe in the Son of Man? The man said, point him out to me, sir, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you're looking right at me. Don't you recognize my voice? Master, I believe, the man said, and he worshiped him. Jesus then said, I came into the world to bring everything into the clear light of day, making all the distinctions clear, so that those who have never seen will see, and those who have made a great pretense of seeing will be exposed as blind. Some Pharisees overheard him and said, Surely, we're not blind, are we? Jesus said, If you were really blind, you would be blameless. But since you claim to see everything so well, you're accountable for every fault and failure. This is the gospel of the Lord. I rest you in peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I will send a summary of a report a Facebook friend in Europe, a report that was done by a group of psychologists recently, where they concluded that when people have misinformation that they believe and are confronted with facts to correct that misinformation, not only do they not change their position but they tend to dig in all harder and hold on to their position even more. You know anyone like that? <laughs> I thought of that as I was reading about the Pharisees in this story today. One of my favorite stories in all of the New Testament. I love this story. It is as contentious and contemporary as next week's Sean Spicer's news topics. <laughs> We often refer to Matthew, Mark, and Luke as the synoptic gospels because they follow the same general synopsis. But the fourth gospel is very different in many ways. For one thing, in the synoptics, Jesus often teaches using parables, you know, little stories with a big point. But there are no real parables in the gospel of John. Instead, John shows us the teachings of Jesus through signs or symbolic actions that we call miracles. There are many players in today's story. We have Jesus, a man born blind, who receives his sight, his parents, his neighbors, and of course the Pharisees. Now, Pharisees get a lot of bad press in the Bible. One would get the impression that they were very evil or irreligious people. Actually, they were very religious. They were experts on the religious law. <coughs> and I think had we been walking this earth at the time of Jesus, many of us would have been Pharisees. I'll come back. The story opens as Jesus is walking with his disciples and they encounter a blind man from birth. We learn later that he was a beggar. In that culture, there were few vocational options for one born blind, except to beg for a living. The disciples ask, did we detect a bit of condescension in their question? Well, why is this guy blind? Because of his sin or his parents' sin? If we see somebody begging on the court, we wouldn't just assume that their character was a little shady, would we? In this section of John's Gospel, Jesus has made the proclamation, I am the light of the world. For what better symbolism for darkness and light and blindness and sight? 
It's important to understand this, or else Jesus responds, you're asking the wrong question, look instead for what God can do, might sound like the man was made a blind beggar for 20 years just so Jesus could show off. Let's understand what's being said here. First, that God does not zap us with calamity because we sin. I repeat, God does not zap us with some calamity because we sin. Oh yes, you do something really stupid, and you'll suffer for it. But it isn't God causing the suffering. So much for the crackpot TV preachers who said that earthquakes in Haiti because they practice voodoo and AIDS is a punishment for being gay and so on. Jesus snuffed that out right here. Furthermore, there's a message here for and about those who are maligned, marginalized because of a disability. When I was a much younger person, we were members of a small congregation. Another member worshipped there regularly. Because of his disease, he could walk only with great difficulty, aided by his elderly widowed father. And he spoke only in grunts. I always greeted him, I can't power you today. But frankly, I never really gave him time to And then one day, he got in the electronics. very kind, in-depth, intelligent article for the church newsletter. I was stunned. I was humbled, and I was ashamed. Ashamed that I had regarded him as something less than a whole person. But we do that with people who are not like us. Not just a person with disabilities, but those who are different because of race, or faith, political beliefs, sexual orientation, those with piercings or tattoos or strange hair. There's so many, many ways that we can find to look down on and to marginalize. Finally, this story deals with a pharisaical attitude, an extreme legalism that focuses on small infractions of a law rather than the greater good that's being accomplished. In this case, looking beyond the miracle of sight brought to a man born blind and instead seeing only that it was done on the Sabbath. The pharisaical attitude runs rampant in our culture. And it often is camouflaged by terms like law and order or national security. In the story, it is only the man who was physically blind who can see Jesus for who he is. The son of man who has come to bring light into the world. Those who can see become blind. Are we not sometimes those who prefer not to see what is right in front of our noses? Who prefer to live in darkness, hanging on to our alternative facts rather than opening our eyes to the brilliant light of God's presence? Ah, but the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness will not overcome. For Jesus takes all that deep darkness and willful blindness upon himself on the cross. And like the man born blind, so shall we look into the eyes of Jesus, fall down and worship him, and follow him.